I was talking about uh, 1970s Britain, which is, of course, the era of you know, Harold Wilson, Ted Heath, David Bowie, Fish Fingers, Finders Crispy Pound Cakes. Um, for me, it was the, because I was a child, I was born in 74. It was the era of the Space Hopper, Star Wars, Bagpuss and the Wombles. Um, and what I was trying to do was to kind of give a kind of panorama of the decade, but also to pick out what I thought were the, the trends, the historical trends that really mattered. So things like the growth of consumerism and credit, um, Britain joining Europe, which I think was a huge development, uh, which we're still arguing about, of course, to this day. And the single biggest thing, I think, was the massive um, expansion of the expectations and horizons of women. Because to be a woman at the beginning of the 70s, I think it was a very different matter from at the end or in the early 80s, you know, when you got a woman prime minister and just the sort of, a lot of the barriers um, to women had fallen. So I was sort of giving a bit of um, an overview of all of that, really, and picking out some of the... the what I hope were the most uh, memorable or amusing anecdotes and sort of little bits of colour from the, a very colourful decade. Um, how did the audience react? Well, obviously, you know, within about 10 minutes, 95% uh, of them had run for the exit. So uh, the ones who, the two or three who remained, I think, really enjoyed it. No, I think they, the audience, um, the audience seemed quite you know, happy enough. They got some great questions. I think what's interesting about it, in this kind of talk, in this kind of history, is that the audience have often lived through the 70s. They have their own very strong personal memories and opinions about the characters and, and all the rest of it. And actually, a lot of the fun of the talk comes in the questions when people say, oh, I remember this, I remember that. Uh, I'll tell you about that. I was working in a factory, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that kind of thing. And that's when you learn a lot yourself as the, as the um, speaker because they, the people in the audience sort of have access to all these very individual memories that, you know, you don't have. I think the brilliant thing about this event, as opposed to other, let's say, lesser history festivals or book festivals, is that it brings together the BBC history readership with uh, people who write for it and the historians who are on TV or in the sort of bestseller lists and all the rest of it. And actually, for ordinary readers, it's an unparalleled opportunity to get to speak to you know historians and whatnot. And for me as a historian, it is brilliant to be in a room with you know 200 not only a captive audience on whom I can inflict my opinions for an hour but also to get to learn from them to see what kind of things interest them to hear their opinions you know quite often when you're writing for a magazine you are sort of in a bit of a vacuum and there's a bit of a wall between you and the people who actually read your stuff and I think you know for, B for people who love history there's no better event actually to get to meet the people who are, as it were, toying at the coalface, and for us to then learn in turn from our readers.